So now we come to our scripture time, and we're going to do an oldie but goodie here of uh, Genesis. We're jumping back into Genesis. I know it kind of seems odd perhaps this time of, of year to talk about Genesis, but I hope you'll see the, uh, the, the, the transition here, how we tie it together. Genesis 6. Um, chapter 6, verses 11 through 22, it will be familiar to you. However, I'm using the NLT translation, just to mix it up a bit, uh, the New Living Translation. So hear these words. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God also observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along the earth. So God told Noah, build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior and make the boat 450 feet long we converted it to modern day uh, <laughs> dimensions, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Then leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. But I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives, and bring a, every, a pair of every kind of animal with you, male and female, into the boat to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire with your love and your grace. Amen. Okay. So sometimes I wonder how on earth can I have consistent, steadfast, and faithful obedience to God? That's tough. And I imagine you feel the same way sometimes, too, knowing that we live in such a broken, corrupt, and sinful world, and it's easy to get swept up in it. And we are all far from being perfect or godly. But we can, we can be inspired by Noah and the story we often you know, attribute to, a kid's Bible story. Noah was righteous. He was obedient, faithful, but not sinless. God saw favor on Noah, and God kept his promise to save humanity and not to flood the world again. Now, no matter where you all are, on your faith journey, your journey in life that we walk here on earth, no matter where you are, you don't have to be perfect or sinless for God to love you. We all are sinners just by, by nature. But I will say that it does make God smile with our valiant attempts, repentance, and obedience. But he loves us nonetheless. Imagine, just imagine a world where, where we were all like Noah and, and we're faithful to all that God asks of us. Despite how crazy it sounds, how out of this world, unrealistic, unattainable, and unpopular. What if we all were still obedient? Hmm. Imagine us all being, all being humble, vulnerable, childlike, and so obedient. That's something to ponder. 
We all can have those, those characteristics and those qualities, but all the time and everybody, whew. Well, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that yes, it's Mardi Gras season now. <laughs> and the pews are a little thinner than they usually are. So I commend you for coming today as we prepare for the Super Bowl later and Bacchus and all the other parades. I live in Slidell, so I'm not as privy or understanding all the parades down here. I'm not from here either, but, <laughs> but I love it too. But I think at the same time, we can also embrace that we are approaching Ash Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, which is, yes, indeed, the beginning of our 40-day Lenten season leading up to Easter. But we can still embrace these lessons from the Noah's Ark story today. So let's just do a quick snapshot. I know that the scripture describes it, but Genesis 101, you know, we crack open these archives of the Old Testament of Noah and his amazing call on his life by God. So Adam and Eve were in a garden. It kind of sounds like a bad joke, but <laughs> they were in the garden, right? And one of Adam and Eve's children was Seth. And one of Seth's descendants was Noah. Just trying to give you a little background here. And the Bible tells us in many places that Noah, this Noah was a righteous man with whom God had favor on. Noah lived in a time when humanity was going downhill. <laughs> you, you might say much like today, right? If you watch the news at all. There was a lot of immortality and, and wickedness, disobedience, and very godless. Yet Noah remained a firm believer of God, steadfast in his faith. And this made God very pleased with him. Yet at the same time, God grieved over mankind that he indeed had created. It went south. In fact, Genesis 6-6 says, God's heart was filled with pain. Now, in a move only God could do, he decided to flood the world and start over, a clean slate, if you will. But he opted to spare Noah and his family and enough animals to start anew. Can you imagine? So he spoke to Noah and told him exactly what to do, what to build, those details, those, the, every detail, every dimension, and I don't know, back in the day it was called, what, cubics or something? So we converted it to feet for us Americans. And all the animals. And he even said the animals would flock to him. After 40 days, if you recall, which is interesting, 40 is a big, 40 days of Lent, 40 days flooding, uh, 40 days and nights of constant rain, the earth flooded and remained so for what they think about 150 days, but who really knows. And when the flood finally subsided, the ark settled on a mountain. And I don't know if you remember, in 2010, they saw on the news that they, they found like remnants of the ark in some mountain in, I think it was Turkey, modern-day Turkey. Um, I don't know, Google it, but I remember that being in the news. So his, uh, Noah and his families were uh, saved. He followed uh, God's commandments. And as strange and difficult as it was, they survived and, and Noah built an altar, offering up sacrifice and thank God for his mercies. And God promised never to flood the world again. Humanity was restored. And I know you remember probably what the, the covenant symbol, the grace-filled symbol of God's promise fulfilled was a... Anybody? Um, Rainbow, yes. <laughs> you can type it in the chat for the, those of you online. Yes, it was a rainbow. So Noah's obedience and faithfulness were rewarded, and aren't we glad it was? <laughs> so let me ask you, kind of rhetorically, and then I'll answer it, <laughs> but I want you to answer in your head, what does the Noah story tell us about God? One thing, it tells us that God can grieve with us. He grieved for humanity, right? And that the good Lord can be saddened by our sinfulness, our recklessness, and disobedient behaviors. It also says that God disciplines and blesses his children, just like our, as parents and our parents disciplined us, and we bless and discipline our kids. But I think ultimately it also shares that God keeps his promises with us and loves us so. So we're approaching this climax of Mardi Gras season, but let's face it, Mardi Gras season is known for its overindulgences, extravagant fun, and reckless merriment. And it is fun. 
but we probably do a heck of a lot of things that we regret. <laughs> and God sees it all. And for that, he mourns. But let's pause today and focus on our repentance and, and obedience as we lean into this upcoming Lenten season. And it's not my intent to be a Debbie Downer. Pastor Dan might get me on this because he's a big Mardi Gras guy. But I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer about Mardi Gras since we're in the throes of it. And it is a sacred secular time in our region. But Lent is coming, my friends, like it does every year with Ash Wednesday this week. So just let that settle on your hearts. Now I ask, what does the Noah's Ark story tell you about Noah? And I think that was kind of clear, that, that he had a faithful commitment to God, accepting God's call on him and following through. He put God first. I don't know what I would do. I'll be honest with you. Build, a, build an ark, you know? It, I'd like to think I'd be obedient. But Noah displayed patience persistence and that obedience and people must have thought he was crazy right his family too has god ever asked you to do something crazy just laid on your heart and you're like what imagine being no and listening to god's every word talking to god faithfully you know obeying him holding firm even when god tells you to build a ginormous boat what the now you may recall there have been several uh, Noah movies, you know, in the secular theaters over the years. I think there was one not long ago. Um, but I'm going to take you back 17 years for a minute to the Noah movie that is humorous, a humorous example of what it might have felt like or looked like if Noah lived in our times today. Have you ever seen the 2007 movie, Evan Almighty? Evan Almighty, anyone seen it with Stephen Carell? It's been a while. I see a nod over here. Yeah, online. I, it's on Netflix now. You, you got to see it. Steve Carell, I'm just going to give you an overview, a little, a little snippet, because it's, it's fun to watch. Uh, Steve Carell plays a newly elected congressman following God's command. God, played by none other of Morgan Freeman, right? God. <laughs> He's done that, I think, in several movies. <laughs> Uh, to build this ark in preparation of a flood. And they're all looking around. It's like beautiful sunshine. And you can imagine, if you know the comedian uh, Steve Car Carell, he leaned right into this. So, of course, his political co-workers in Congress think he's crazy, and so does his wife and two young sons. But unlike Congress, who fired him because he was so crazy following God, his family reluctantly at first agreed to support their husband and their dad in building an ark. He's like, it'll just be a weekend project or two, you know, and he's laughing and, and it continues to get encouragement from God throughout this whole time. And of course, that's Morgan Freeman popping in and they have a dialogue and it's just, it's just who he's all in white. So I, I challenge you just to just Google it, Evan Almighty, uh, and just watch the trailer. I wanted to play the trailer, but for copyright and all that, because we're streaming, I couldn't do it. But, but, but look that up, and it is on Netflix, be, because it is, it is a comedy, so I'm not trying to you know, do anything sacrilege here. <laughs> it is a comedy, but it has a very profound underlying message as Christians. So the biblical Noah, not Steve Carell, the biblical Noah can give us inspiration to be like him by following his example of not only listening to God and hearing him, but obeying and trusting him. And that's, that's a lot different. And at the same time, know that God loves us. God loves you unconditionally. His love is everlasting, friends. Despite our shortfalls, that's what unconditional is. In fact, the one major weakness that Noah had that is referenced in the Bible was his overindulgences of wine. Yes, and I can relate. I love red wine, but not overindulgences. His transgression, or this transgression of Noah, is even noticed, noted in Genesis chapter 9. His drunkenness with wine and embarrassment that it had on his family kind of brought him down here around his people around him. But knowing all that Noah went through and his overindulgences, it is possible still to have faithful obedience to God amidst our broken and sinful world, but we need to rise up 
rise up to that. And the days of Noah are like today, folks. God gave that covenant to Noah, symbolizing through a rainbow that he kept his promise. But today, today, we Christians have the new covenant from God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God's promises continue. In fact, Jesus referred to the days of Noah in Matthew 24 and Luke 17 when Jesus foretold his second coming, saying that people would be as surprised as his return as they were when the flood came. And the disciple Peter referred to the days of Noah in 1 Peter 3 to comparing our salvation in Christ with God's rescue of Noah and humanity. Now, last week, I, I do watch. When I'm not here, when I'm in Slido, I, I, I'm online. And uh, if, I, if I'm not down here or preaching. And last week, if you recall, in Pastor Dan's closing benediction, he asked you, if you were here or watching online, and he didn't know what I was going to preach on, by the way, I'll tell you that. What is the path God is asking you to go down? He asked you. And I'll add, especially for this upcoming Lenten season. And like Dan said, he said this, he said, you may think you are crazy when you hear what God tells you. I thought it was perfect. I texted him right at the time. I was like, perfect, you're leading me right into the Noah story. You might think, you know, God's crazy when he tell, lays this on your heart. But then again, Noah heard God, listened, was obedient, and built an ark. Nothing, my friends, nothing is crazy when God directs you to follow the Noah's Ark story is not just a kid's Old Testament Bible story or just about a man who may have seemed crazy and loved wine, seemed crazy like Steve Carell did in the Evan Almighty movie, but it's who we are today. It's who we are today as we abide by our faithful obedience to God and find comfort in the fact that we've been given the new covenant in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, this fulfilled promise is the rainbow of a lifetime for all believers. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for your promises kept. Your new covenant in Christ, help us. Help us, Lord, to be as faithfully obedient as Noah this day and starting even more intentionally this Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season. Amen.